guys and welcome back to this lecture now uh, this is the last part which in which we will discuss about the fault tolerance in Hadoop and MapReduce applications so in the previous lectures we talked about the basics of MapReduce then we took a closer look over MapReduce then we talked about mappers and reducers and how combiner is working how partitioner is working what's the sorting function in Hadoop MapReduce Later we talked about task and job scheduling where when we talked about job tracker and task tracker and how these work together in scheduling our jobs and having our tasks to be taken care of. Now we'll be discussing about fault tolerance. What happens in case we are processing a job on a very large cluster, say 15 or 16 terabytes or 15,000 gigabytes. What happens if task tracker or job tracker crashes? what happens in that case will will the data that that was being processed be removed whether it be it banking transactions financial transaction e-commerce data or whatever we don't want our to lose our data so let us see how Hadoop MapReduce applies fault tolerance to preserve the data that we are processing so node failures so MapReduce can guide us towards job completion even when jobs are running on large clusters where probability of failure severely increases. So job, um, MapReduce jobs which are being run upon small clusters have a very low probability of failure. But when we think about a larger cluster, say 16 or 70 terabytes, 70,000 gigabytes that is, a lot of data and every byte is useful to us so there the probability of failure increases multiple folds so Hadoop MapReduce achieves, achieves fault tolerance through restarting tests so supposedly there is a task tracker that has failed so MapReduce will try to restart that task that has failed if the task tracker fails to communicate with the job tracker we were discussing in the previous lectures if you haven't gone through uh, we would recommend you to go over the previous lecture once and then come back and continue with this lecture so if a task tracker fails to communicate with the job tracker for a period of time by default is one minute although we can readjust that as well so the job tracker will assume that the task tracker in question has crashed. In the previous lecture, we saw how task tracker will send the request to job tracker. It, would, it wouldn't be the job tracker sending request to task tracker for any task. But job tracker has the job to, to see whether the task tracker is responding or not. So if, if by default, say one minute, for one minute, task tracker did not reply. So job tracker will assume that the task tracker that in question that was in question has crashed so what will happen if it has crashed if the job it was still in the map phase that means that we haven't been able to move on towards reduce phase it was just the map phase in our map reduce problem wherein the task tracker crashed so if the job was still in the map phase job tracker will ask another task tracker previously it asked to for to task tracker 1 now we'll assume it w it has gone to task tracker 2 to re-execute all the map tasks that previously ran upon the failed task tracker so considerably we can assume supposedly in an organization there was a person who was employed for doing certain tasks and that person failed to meet the requirement or uh, was not able to respond or complete the task so the manager what will the manager do manager will assign another person to do that same task that previously an another employee was doing so if the job is still in the map phase job tracker will ask another task tracker to re-execute the task that previously ran upon that failed task tracker if the job was in the reduced phase job tracker will, will ask another task tracker to re-execute all the map all the reduced tasks that were in progress on the failed task tracker coming to speculative execution 
So what is exactly speculative execution? So I would like you to take a guess over this and then you can resume the lecture from here. A party head loop does not actually fix or diagnose a slow running task. Instead, it tries to detect when a task is running slower than expected and launches another equivalent task as a backup. Now the backup task is called as speculative task. This whole process is regarded as speculative execution in Hadoop. So a MapReduce job is dominated by the slowest task. So what was the task that, that took the most amount of time to get executed? After getting that, Map, MapReduce attempts to locate that slow running task and runs a replicated or a speculated speculative test that will optimize optimistically commit before the corresponding stragglers. There is a task that is struggling to meet the requirement, is, is going slower than expected. All of these uh, fault tolerance which we are doing on commodity hardware is also there to optimize our processing time. We cannot wait for say 20 hours for a one terabyte job to be executed that's too much we can execute say 10 tasks in that time this is why we are having speculative execution in Hadoop wherein it does not fix so it would take a, a certain amount of time or an effort to go for Hadoop to see why is the task running slower and now, now this will also take some amount of processing to be done again some amount of computation to be done so trying to minimize our computational requirements as well as the amount of time that is being taken to diagnose the problem instead what it tries to do is when when a task is running slower it automatically detects that task and launches another equivalent task as a backup that is known as speculative execution so in general this strategy is known as task resiliency or task replication as opposed to data replication but in Hadoop it is re regarded as or referred to as speculative execution only one copy of a straggler is allowed to be speculated whichever copy among the two copies of a task commits first it becomes the definitive copy the other one is killed by a job tracker so here we are running the same task two times whichever task commits first that is the winner the other one get, just gets destroyed by the job tracker so there is the task tracker there are two task tracker running the same task whichever task tracker finishes first that gets the winning point and the losing one the data gets destroyed now the question comes how to locate stragglers Hadoop monitors each task progress using a progress score between 0 and 1 after getting the progress score if a task progress is score is running less than 0.2 say which is the average and the task has run for at least one minute it is marked as a straggler here we can see in a picture where there is a task which has been here we can see two tasks number one which is taking say very less time and T and T1 which is taking more amount of time to get executed so this task T1 over here will be marked as straggler. We can see the amount of time it's taking. Here we can see that T2 is a straggler instead of T1 as T1 has executed most of its task while T2 is still 
less than 0.2. Then we come to sensing devices such as smartwatch, smart jewelry, fitness trackers, sports watches, smart glasses, and smart clothing. Where big data is being boomed. So data originates as digital data. What we are seeing over here, what we are analyzing is all digital data. Data originates as digital data rather than being converted into or digitalized later is proliferating. Think digital electronic uh, medical records, implanted medical devices and diagnostic imaging technology. All of these is digital data. These are certain applications where Hadoop could be really useful in maintaining and processing all of these data. So this was all about fault tolerance in Hadoop and some definitions about different applications where Hadoop can be used. Hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. If you guys are having any doubts you can leave them in the comment section below thank you and happy learning